Thank you very much. What an overwhelming welcome. I'm so deeply touched with your affection and welcome, Professor. Thank you for inviting me here. I'm so delighted. From the moment I step outside the campus, I can feel a different energy than what I do. I think this university is an epitome of art, crafts, and everything about this place is so artistic, so creative. No wonder I see such creative faces around, full of fire in their eyes. Ever since we all carry a dream, and you are carrying a dream, you are the budding entrepreneurs of tomorrow. I think I would like to start by saying that every great innovation in this world is a result of somebody's dream. It's all about dream. Dream knows no boundaries. There is no monopoly of business schools when it comes to ideas or any country. It can be born in Montenegro or in Kathmandu or in Amza or China or Ukraine. Ideas come from passion. You because you believe in it. And more importantly, you believe in yourself. I went to a public school. You know that I come from a very uh, small country, not as small in size as Montenegro, but as Nepal. In the midst of two giants, China and India. 40% of the world's population. It is indeed overwhelming. Having two big countries on your side is always not a matter of opportunity. It can also be a matter of big challenge. And I came from a family which was in business but in our own modest way. Went to a public school, a very ordinary public school. I used to go to my school. I was not as lucky as you all are in a public bus, and that's how my life started. As destiny would have it, my school teacher, when I was 10, as a part of the experiment of my class, which was a vocational training for commercial activities, she asked me to start a tuck shop. You know the tuck shop, right? That in school you have things where you can buy freedoms and chocolates and you know. And she said, why don't you start a company? You borrow one rupee each from your fellow students and start a shop. So every day during the season time, during the season time, you open the shop, sell the goods, and again, replace the stock by buying out from the market at a cheaper price. <laughs> I was equally keen to play football and you know, enjoy life. But that was the order of my teacher, which I did not do. Probably that training at the age of 10 in that school made me what I am today. So where the beginning is made and how the beginning is made is not important. Because I made a success of that business. I was serious, I became serious because I had a responsibility. 
some of my friends saved their pocket money and gave me the quiet capital. They also helped me in running that enterprise. I had to give them the dividend. I had to give them the reward. Those were completely different kind of a situation in terms of communication. My father used to be, my grandfather used to be the textile, bring tech, used to bring textiles from India. We you believe on uh, mules, there were no roads. On mules, the textiles used to be brought across the mountain, crossing the hills. Okay. With the passage of time, Nepal became far more liberal in our own policy. And we wanted to create a little Hong Kong or a little Singapore with an open market regime, knowing India, which was a closed door economy, a socialist economy. So my father started importing textiles from Japan. That was a big move as a family from a small country. Passports were controlled. You really need to, need to have, you know, strong connection to even get a passport. To travel to Japan, even to do business, we have to wait inside the central bank to get a sanction to buy a foreign exchange. Was the need? I think everybody wanted to control. Communication, my God, you cannot believe. There was nothing called, I mean, leave alone, I don't know how many of you have heard of Telex. Have you heard of Telex? Before Telex, we used to have Telegram. And Telegram was a communication method of communication, professional would remember. And every word used to cost us money. So we used to find sentences in as many as limited word as well. If I had to make a telephone call, I had to go to the telecommunication office, book a telephone call, and wait there for several hours for my turn to come. And when turn came, I would be put in a small cubicle and say, okay, come on, speak. And I had to really shout. That would be ecosystem that we started with. A friendly a government policy, not so supportive. Okay, bureaucracy, always thinking, looking at businessmen as someone who uses the country as a exploiter, by and large. Profit making, wealth creation was a bad word. Logistic issues, communication issues. Why am I telling you all this? I'm telling you all this because today the world is. Today's world, if you ask me and I say this whenever I stand in a podium like this with, with young brains and minds and ideas like yourself. I say that there has never been a more more favorable, more supportive, more attractive figure than today for somebody to come to and a businessman of all class. There has never been such a situation to create world class companies, and I'll come to that. Despite the background I gave you of Nepal. And leave alone the political mess of the country, 25 years of constantly changing political dimensions from monarchy to the Federal Republic. We have the US Federal Republic, by the way, we just completed 